Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 5th, 2022 All In for Kansas Kids biweekly webinar. We are so happy to have you joining us at this different day and time uh, for this week's webinar. And um, it's going to be exciting to see both familiar faces and some new faces with us here tonight. So I am Debbie Deer, and I am also joined by Hannah McGahey and Megan Broha, and we all work for the Kansas Children's Cabinet and Trust Fund. And we have uh, planned this webinar uh, together for you here tonight. And for the agenda, we will be uh, giving our general system updates as usual on trainings, programs, and funding opportunities that are currently available to you and the children and families that you provide services to. And then we are very excited to have Angie Carnes and Emily Barnes, the president and vice president of the Child Care Providers Coalition of Kansas here with us to share information about that organization. This week, April 4th through 8th, is the Week of the Young Child. And this is sponsored annually by the National Association for the Education of Young Children, or NACI. And the purpose is to focus public attention on the needs of young children and their families and to recognize the early childhood programs and services that meet those needs. So that applies to most, if not all of you, joining in with us tonight. Uh, the Kansas affiliate for this organization, Casey, is also coordinates these efforts and you can join them each evening from 6.30 to 7 this week for virtual events that are fun to celebrate young children and families. So tomorrow, uh, April 6th, is Work Together Wednesday, where you are encouraged to bring something that you shake to make sounds and then join for a fun time of singing and moving and reading together. April 7th is Artsy Thursday with an interactive story time uh, with art related themes. And then April 8th is Family Friday with an engaging opportunity for families to connect and learn strategies to increase positive behaviors through a program called Five Minutes a Day Keeps the Tantrums Away. So I hope that some of you can plan to join in on these fun activities this week. April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and you might recognize and be very familiar with the blue pinwheels that we see around right now, as well as uh, some of you might have the blue pinwheel pins, one like I'm wearing tonight, mm -hmm. as symbols to represent this uh, month and either have one of them or see them displayed in your communities. KCSL or Kansas Children's Service League is the state chapter for Prevent Child Abuse America and leads the charge in organizing this campaign every year along with providing resources. Mm -hmm. And Megan is going to be uh, sharing links in the chat. And one of those will take you to the 2022 Child Abuse Prevention Month Toolkit, which is 29 pages uh, of templates, talking points, calendar events, media and marketing materials, social media information, and fun craft projects, and also an order form for you to access uh, the materials that are mentioned in the toolkit and the resources, mm -hmm. as well as some of the pinwheels, if you're interested in those. Um, and you can also contact Pam Noble, and that information is being provided to you at KCSL with, by email or phone for more information. We continue to share information with you on round three of the sustainability grants for child care providers that opened on March 1st. This is available through a partnership with KDHE and Child Care Aware of Kansas. And um, I'm sorry, DCF and Child Care Aware of Kansas. And applications will be accepted through November 30th with up to 14 monthly payments available. And you can find this information in the chat. And I hope that many of you already have or will be able to look into this opportunity to benefit the important work that you're doing to provide care for children in Kansas, especially many of those mm -hmm. that might be joining us tonight. Your work is very vital to support families across the state and this opportunity will hopefully make that process easier for you. We also want to announce the upcoming Kansas Association for Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Annual Conference that is scheduled for April 28th and 29th. Uh, there is an opportunity for a book study via Zoom uh, prior to that conference coming up on April 13th. 
And again, that information is available in the chat. An opportunity is um, available for you to take the All In for Kansas Kids Child Care Provider and Staff Survey. And so this is a short survey that will only take a few minutes of your time. And we wanna hear about your expertise in providing services and working in the early childhood field across the state. And your um, responses will also help us with exploring the workforce, financial and retirement planning, and how to expand capacity in providing services to families, which we all know is very vital to the future of um, both families, children, businesses, and employers in Kansas. And if you take the survey, you will also get to enter um, a contest to win a possible $100 Walmart gift card. You have an opportunity to join Greenbush uh, again during this week, the week of the young child for virtual professional development opportunities. There are dates listed here um, that are uh, happening uh, April 6th and 7th. And so you can contact Barbara Ganaway at Greenbush for more details on that. Mental health first aid training is being offered through the United Methodist Health Ministry Fund as part of their work. The Governor's Commission on Racial Equity and Justice included this training in two of its behavioral health recommendations. And these training sessions are offered at no cost. Uh, space is limited. So um, you might want to uh, go there and get registered. Uh, sessions are scheduled through May, but stay tuned because additional trainings are possibly going to be scheduled. The Kansas State School for the Blind is hosting a preschool enrichment program open house this week on Friday, April 8th. Uh, there will be a sensory playstations and crafts av available for the children ages two to five years old to come play and learn. And you can drop in from one to 6 p.m. So this information is also in the chat. And the Lawrence Kindergarten Transitions Team is hosting an upcoming Early Childhood Family Resource Fair at their Kennedy Early Childhood Center this Saturday on April 9th from nine to noon. And this is a family-friendly event with over 40 local organizations that will be in attendance. And this is an exciting opportunity if you live in the Lawrence area or you know someone that does that you can share this information with, you will wanna be sure to put this on your calendars. And, you can go to the email um, that Megan is providing, or um, you can also scan this QR code. It is that time of year when most school districts are holding their kindergarten roundup events, and KSDE has the Kindergarten in Kansas booklet available for families. And this can be used as a reference by families and caregivers for kindergarten readiness, successful transition planning, uh, from early childhood to kindergarten. And this booklet is available for free distribution um, in multiple languages. So you can go to the link in the chat to access this resource online and also to request copies to share throughout your networks. The Early Childhood Recommendations Panel um, is something that we always wanna keep you informed on. Uh, we will continue to do that through these webinars and other platforms as well. Meetings are on the third Friday of every month in the mornings from 9 to 1130. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 15th um, next week. You can watch them live as they happen on the Children's Cabinet YouTube channel. And then you can also go to the Cabinet's website uh, for previous recordings of any others. Uh, we did recently meet on the 11th of March, and at this meeting, the final vote took place by the full panel to approve two recommendations that were brought forth. The first one um, by the Child Care Recruitment and Retention Work Group is for a one-time bonus to the child care workforce. And the second one by the Quality and Environments Work Group um, is for the state and local ICCs to enhance efforts that will support families and early childhood um, professionals in working with children uh, with developmental delays, disabilities, and special health care needs. And so these recommendations were presented and approved by the Children's Cabinet at their meeting last week, which is very exciting for all the work that's been done uh, by the panel and the work groups. 
And so now that they are approved, implementation plans uh, will be put into place that will allow this work to move forward. And we definitely want to thank all of those members um, that were involved and the Children's Cabinet for developing and approving this work uh, that will support the efforts across the early childhood system throughout the state. And so now I would love to introduce uh, first up Angie Carnes, who is the president of uh, the Child Care Providers Coalition and soon to be followed by Emily Barnes, the vice president uh, to present information for us tonight on the great work that's happening in their organization. So welcome to both of you. Thank you for having us tonight. I will let you just go right on to the next slide. <laughs> All right, um, I am Angie Carnes. I'm a provider here in Olathe, Kansas. I'm originally from Emporia. I have worked in many um, different aspects of early childhood. I started out in Emporia State at the Child Development Center. I operated a small program in America as the director. I then worked at the um, Emporia School District and their e Migrant Even Start program, and then decided that I needed to be out on my own and start my own program because I felt like I needed to um, follow my own philosophy and bring it to the children in my community. So my, my youngest was three when I started. So I have been doing childcare now for, I think 18 years is where I'm at. Um, I've been a member, I think of CCPC for almost five, um, you know, with COVID I've kind of lost track of time. So I really could be totally off on that, but I think it's about five years. It might be six, but I really do. Um, CCPC is near and dear to my heart and I'm excited tonight to let you guys know about it. And Emily's going to share all our advocacy issues and the stuff that she does, but I'm going to get started right off the bat. Um, our basic vision statement for CCPC is that I'm just going to read it. Every family child care provider in Kansas has access to the highest quality professional development and resources that promote the growth as educators and leaders. And that's pretty basic. And so the, our mission statement then is to follow is that we want to provide those training opportunities, the support, and all the resources that we can to help the um, providers here in Kansas. And advocacy is a big part of that. And getting um, all this information out from our website that you can see daily is also a very important um, component of our program. And I'll let you move forward. As you can see, our core values are pretty basic. We support all the licensed providers here in Kansas. We um, support the diversity across the state that comes from people that are living here in Kansas City to everybody that's living in small rural communities. We know that it looks different across the state for different providers. And we hope that we can um, help everybody and work together and find some solutions to the issues that we're all dealing with. We also, of course, promote um, compliance with all our requirements through KDHE. We um, advance professionalism within the family child care field. We collaborate with early childhood professionals statewide that looks like us going to a lot of meetings outside of our daycare day and also um, having people join us at our bi-monthly um, board meetings so they can tell us what's going on. We also have pretty much daily communications with organizations um, having us share their information and what's going on. And then of course we advocate for all the providers here in Kansas and that is one of the big components that Emily works on on a daily basis. Next slide, please. We are actually run by all volunteers. And I don't think a lot of people realize that, that we are not getting paid in this organization. We work our daily day. I start at seven o'clock. I end my day at 5.30. I'm answering emails during the day. I'm taking meetings during the day. Um, I do this because I love it, but it takes a lot of work from a lot of different people behind the scenes. So. We're always looking for people to join us, but it takes dedication and it's not easy, but we would love to have you join us. And as you can see, Emily and I are listed, listed. Laura Gunderson, Tiffany Manns, and Brenda Schoen are our executive board. Um, and then we have members at large, Stacey Hook, Sarah, and I'm gonna say Sarah's last name wrong, Gortz, I think, 
Alexis Amos, Beth Kirk, Julie Bartsley, and Emily Wellborn. And the goal of our board is to have people from across the state. Um, sometimes it ends up looking like we're kind of grouped together. We have a lot of people from Kansas City right now, but we're really working on um, broadening that. And we have some new people coming in onto our board this year. So we're excited to get the voices heard across the state. So next slide, please. We have lots of benefits. Um, one of our big things is that you do get a discount to any of our professional development events. We have a bi-monthly um, newsletter that goes out that we share information from across the state, across um, all the people that wanna send us information, our collaborating partners, just different organizations. We also have a business page um, on Facebook that we share daily. Um, we try to help people um, point them in the right direction about all this grant information, because as we know, in social media, things can get a little muddy. And so when people are starting to ask questions, we try to find the answers for them and direct them in the right place to get their questions answered, because the last thing we want to do is be spreading misinformation. So that's a big thing for us. And of course, advocacy is one of our main components. And I've said that a couple of times. Emily has gone and, sp and spoke at so many different places and She's been a very huge asset to CCPC and getting the voices, um, are your voices heard? Let me see. We also have a Facebook group that's only for members. We have scholarship opportunities. Um, during a professional development event, we recognize uh, members that have been doing childcare for 35 plus years. We also have a provider of the year award that we um, nominate every year. And then, it also meets requirements for your CDA and accreditation. So we're working on more training opportunities also throughout the year. So we're looking forward to that. Next slide, please. And now I'm going to pass the torch on to Miss Emily because she is going to tell you all about advocacy. And she might talk for a while, but it's important information and I'm glad she's here to tell you. So Emily, it's all yours. Thank you. So I am... <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Emily Barnes, um, and I'm also in Olathe um, as well. Um, I have been doing child care. <clears throat> I've operated my business for eight and a half years. Um, I've been in child care for about 11, um, but my background is special education. And um, I started off working with um, individuals with various developmental um, disabilities and delays. I've worked with um, children from birth all the way up to adults in their 60s in lots of different environments. Um, so um, it interestingly, I stepped away from the um, developmental disabilities field in the interest of trying to slow life down and spend more time with my son and um, nothing slows life down. <laughs> it just stays busy, gets busy, stays busy, um, but it's been fun. And I have been a member of CCPC since 2018 um, and came on as advocacy. And, and at that time, advocacy very much was a find out what's happening in Topeka and tell people to write letters. And there wasn't much to it. Um, and, and mostly because in our field, we don't really know how to advocate for ourselves. And so I came on um, the board and started attending some meetings and basically just started asking questions. Can you explain this? And what about that? And, and things like that. And now, two years later, almost three years since I started doing some of the advocacy stuff, um, we have an amazing experience um, going on. Um, so we we take advocacy incredibly seriously. And what we try to do is make sure that we've got multiple opportunities to represent the voice of family childcare across Kansas and the nation. Right now, most of our work has focused in Kansas, mostly because we have, we have formed some very strong, um, some strong collaborations with multiple agencies and organizations and things like that. And so for the CC bo CCPC board, what that looks like is a lot of meetings like Angie had mentioned. I am a part of the Early Childhood Recommendations Panel and have enjoyed that and intend to stay with that. Um, we also have some members of our board who participate in the Systems Improvement Team with KDHE, um, which is an incredible um, opportunity um, for 
for collaboration. Um, we there is another uh, group of members from different um, non-state based agencies or organizations for partners in early success where we're trying to make sure to promote the voice and and and, and that partners for early success is for all early childhood whether that's specific to child care or you know um, Kansas Sur uh, children's services League is represented on their child care aware is represented things like that um, we work to build um, relationships with our state legislators so that we can talk knowledgeably about the needs and strengths of our field. Oftentimes, when it comes to um, working with legislators, they have to make decisions, but that doesn't mean that they truly understand everything about our field and what we're needing. Um, and then we participate in webinars like, like tonight and town halls, meetings and public discussion that allows us to get our voice out there and, and promote the, the topics that we need to hear discussed. Can we advance to the next slide? Um, so before we go into the website, one of the things I am gonna add is that for me, actually, can we go back to the previous slide real quick? What that looks like for the board, that's really overwhelming. <laughs> that is a lot on anybody's um, plates. And so, but that's not the entirety of what CCPC. Hey, Huck, can you go lay down, please? I know you want to participate. Sorry, my, my lab loves joining in. Um, <clears throat> advocacy does not have to look like this for every person who wants to promote our field. The beauty of advocacy is that it is all advocacy, taking time um, for you at the end of a day to explain why something like a sustainability grant is going to benefit your program and talking about this with your families, that's advocacy. Discussing topics with the local um, school principal, elementary school principal, and finding out what would be helpful to your school's kindergarten staff if you were working on it in your program. That's advocacy. Um, there are um, people across the state who are forming <laughs> forming um, smaller groups as a chance to connect and take care of some local topics. Um, and, and that is equally important mm -hmm. as advocacy. So what I don't want anybody to think is that, you know, if they're nervous to contact a legislator or write an article for the newspaper or show up to a statewide meeting, if, if that's not really things that work for you, that's okay because there are so many advocacy opportunities available. And that's one of the things that I hope to do tonight is kind of talk with people about what can advocacy look like in the average situation because not everything has to be at the state level. Um, so we can, I think we can go forward on the next slide. Angie, do you want to take over on the website or you want me to keep going on that? I'll keep going. I just couldn't find my unmute button. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'm, I'm back. Good job, Emily. There's a lot that goes on in ad advocacy. Oh, I'm tired, ladies. That KU game wiped me out. <laughs> um, that Emily could talk and talk and talk about all this, but she's now taking care of her dogs <laughs> and she's back. Um, so I do wanna go back. Um, one thing that we're really working on with CCPC is we created regional groups um, to help build relationships across the state. And that is one thing that we found that we have areas or pockets across the state that kind of feel abandoned. Um, that there's nobody out there or there's just a few providers in their area and they need that support. And that support might not look like trainings. It might look like, I have a question, I need to talk to somebody or I'm having a really rough day and I just need to vent. So we've tried to create um, these regional groups and they're based off uh, the regions off of Child Care Aware. And you can find them on our Facebook group, um, our Facebook page, they're on there. So if anybody's interested in joining, you do actually do not have to be a member to join the regional groups. It's for anybody that's a provider across the state. Um, so I want you to make sure you take a look at that because that is one of the things that I'm actually proud that we've created and we're working on um, building those relationships. 
Okay, on to our website. Um, there is a lot of information. Our website has evolved over the last few years. Um, you can find general information about CCPC, our history, information about our board members, our events, but we also have sections about how to get started in childcare. So if there's somebody out there that's interested and they need some help, we have a whole section that you can, hey, go to the CCPC site and look up, you know, how to get started to be a provider. Um, we also have a members only section that's really great um, that we offer business um, information. We offer stuff for um, food planning, menu planning, different lesson plans, and just overall support. And again, it has listed all our awards that we have, different things you can find, but take a look when you can. We also do a blog. We don't do it very often because again, we're all so busy that writing a blog sometimes just feels like one more thing to add to our plate, but we do sometimes get together and get something put out there. So keep your, we always post that on our Facebook page also and share it. So I will let you go on to the next slide. Again, social media. Um, we're not so much on Twitter, but we are on Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, I know social media gets a bad rap, but I really do feel like that we reach a majority of our providers through social media. Um, we do emails and all those kinds of things also, but social media has been our main source to getting information out there and helping people. And so I like, I want people to follow us. I want, you know, and if you guys, if any organization has things that they need to share, we are happy to share it because that's the goal of our organization is to get information about everybody else out there so they know what's going on. So again, they're not getting misinformation. They get it right from the source. And I will let you move on to the next slide. And again, we do, I am going to pat ourselves on the back because we have worked hard over these last years trying to um, make people recognize CCPC. The people before us did a lot of hard work and they, you know, they brought us a long way. But the group that I have right now has worked their tails off to make sure that CCP is doing CCPC is doing great and we're moving forward and we're evolving and we're making changes to um, make it better. So this year we're actually doing our 34th annual professional development event. And as all of you know, um, with COVID, we had to pivot. This used to be a big in-person event and we had to do some things and change it because we wanted to make sure our providers could get still get the training and the support that they needed. So we did it and it's been a success. Um, we just closed our registration and we have 170 people signed up. So we are, I'm overly excited. I'm scared. <laughs> um, we hope we get all the kinks. You know, we had kinks last year, but you know, it's, it's technology. I'm sure we'll have something pop up. Uh, we also, Emily, you'll be there to help me, right? <laughs> Again, I, we just created our regional professional groups. That was originally um, developed as training opportunities. And again, with COVID, we pivot because we saw that everybody was offering these great training opportunities right now. I don't think providers can say, I can't find this because there's so much available. But again, what we found out, they needed support. So we changed things up and we made these groups and we're working on, you know, it's going to take time. It takes time to build relationships, but that is our goal. We've collaborated with um, a different organizations. I hate acronyms, y'all. K-A-E-Y-C and K-A-C to hold webinars um, and different town halls that we've had a great turnout. We worked with Thrive um, about the healthcare marketplace to share information about to providers about that. We've increased our membership and provider, provider involvement across the state. Um, we've hosted a provider chat to explore educational op opportunities um, earlier in the year with different CDA, get your bachelor's, that kind of thing. And it worked out really great. Of course, Emily Barnes is our advocacy chair. And she got up and she stood up in front of people that I am not brave enough to do. And she testified to the House Committee and she spoke in your behalf and she did wonderful. We also have involvement in the Children's Cabinet and the Recommendation Panel and the Systems Improvement Team. And we also have a member on our board that was just voted onto the NAFCC board as a state rep. So that's great on a national level that she gets to have her voice heard and anything that's going on here in Kansas, she can let them know. 
next. Hey, Anthony, I'm going to pop in real quick before we scooch yeah. forward when um, talking about testifying. And for anybody who is in here as a provider, um, a lot of people feel very intimidated with the concept of um, going to talk to legislators. Except one of the things I would like people to consider is that um, our legislators are simply people too. And um, sometimes we agree with them and sometimes we don't, but at the end of the day, they are, they are people. And I have had a very good experience so far um, because I've been able to have conversations authentically and talk about the things that are happening in our, in our world, in our days, in our living rooms and things like that. Um, and so what you don't have to do is just decide that all of a sudden one day I'm just gonna show up in Topeka and testify to a committee about this or that topic. But what you could do is you could learn who is your representative or senator and simply reach out and say, hey, would you be interested in a chance to talk? And I <clears throat> am almost 100% willing to bet that you will actually get quite a few yeses. And you might find that the conversation is a little bit easier than you might think. And so I, I, I just want to encourage people that if you think you might be interested, first of all, I would always be here to help you kind of figure some things out. But also know that a lot of times the reception you get might be a lot more positive than you think. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that got added in. And just so you know, I am one of those people that is scared to death to go talk to any of those people. So I'm glad Emily does that for us because I probably would get up and totally, maybe I would, I would probably cry because that's what I usually do. When I get passionate about something, I cry and that's not always the best thing to do. So I do oh, want to say- you're yeah. killing your stand-up comedy. Like I have not been able to keep it straight over here. So well, I think you I do okay. That. Okay. My yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I do want to thank everybody for coming tonight um, and taking the time out of their busy days because um, we know I'm, I'm my day is packed full, and so coming here tonight to give us just a little bit of your time to listen. Um, if you have any questions. You can always reach out to us. You can email me, you can email Emily. You can join one of those groups on our Facebook page. And then there, there are people there to help you. Just know that you're not in this alone. That's what we want providers to know. You're not in this alone. It feels like it some days, I know it. I'm in my basement with my nine kids doing my stuff. I'm having a bad day and I need help. And I'm not, I have friends that I can, and I, and I consider them friends, I do these people that I work with every day. I, I talk to people across the state. I, I've never met them. I've never met them. And it's a relationship that you build with each other. People just don't know what we go through every day. And so having the support of people that they get you, it's important. And I want providers to know that we're here for you and we'd love to have you join us. And I am done. Need to take questions. Yes, does anybody have any questions or further comments to add to everything that Angie and Emily shared? You may have mentioned this and I could also probably find it on the website, but can you explain the membership, like the fee schedule and how often you have to renew things like that? I absolutely can. Um, we just do a membership once a year. It just made it easier for billing purposes. Again, we're volunteers. so. It's really hard to have people just keep joining. Anyway, you can join, it's $25. You get on our site. Um, if you decide to join later on in the year, um, the rate is prorated. So you wouldn't have to pay $25 if you join like six months into the year. And also when you um, join our events, we also give the opportunity to uh, get a membership at those points also. So it's super easy. I'm actually curious, I have a question for both of you. Um, what has changed for you professionally since joining, since having this organization? And I mean, I think it's probably a little bit difficult because of your additional responsibilities based on your role, but if you can kind of tease it out a little bit, what's changed? Um, well, I will tell you when I, I originally moved here, I was from Emporia and I was part of a group of providers there. 
but not the organization in general. And I moved here and again, I'm, I'm a pretty social person. So I was looking. And so I got hooked up with some people here in Olathe and Brenda Schoen was the president of CCPC at the time. And she brought me in to the organization and I automatically felt a professionalism. Like I wasn't just a childcare provider. I didn't babysit. I was a child care provider. I have, I have a degree. I was respected. Um, it just, it, it just helped a little bit. And, and it doesn't matter that you have a degree or not a degree that doesn't make you a professional. That doesn't mean anything. You can come in and have years of experience or just a little bit and be professional. But I think to me, that's, it was a respect. It was just, it helped get the respect I needed as a professional. Um, I would second much of what Angie said in many ways it was very similar and actually Brenda was also the person that, that brought me into um, CCPC um, I had opened up in 2013 and very quickly um, became connected with people who were very active in CCPC and so for five years I people kept saying you know come to CCPC join and and I always found um, excuse after excuse of oh well you know going to this conference here doesn't really work for me and, and things like that. And I kind of pushed it off, you know, year after year until finally in 2018, I decided, let's do this. Like, let's just go. So I did. Um, and all of a sudden I walked into trainings that I had never actually had business training and I had <clears throat> not actually had the ability to talk with people in the networked way that existed at that conference. And that was still, you know, an in-person conference because it was 2018. And all of a sudden for me, things just felt so much different and stronger. Um, and like Angie, I, I also have a background, you know, I have a um, bachelor's degree. So, I, and I had worked at jobs where I was actually, you know, we would have staff meetings and we would take topics to, to discuss and, you know, hypothesize, how would you handle the situation or that? And I loved it and I was learning all the time. And I was becoming very frustrated with, I didn't have resources to talk with people about different issues. And the trainings were all things that I already knew. And all of a sudden now I came into new contact with new information that was exciting for me and that was fun. And then through that, it, people that I met, they have become my friends. Like Angie said, you know, they're they're not only my colleague, but they're my friends and I, I care about them and I want them to succeed um, as well. And um, and so what it really did was it, it offered me a, a way to feel more professional in this job that in many ways is looked upon as being menial but it's crucially important. And it gave me a network to be able to realize what we're doing is absolutely vital for not just the kids now, but just for every aspect of our society. And, um, and then advocacy that has, um, that has opened up opportunities that I never even knew could possibly exist and seeing the way that our workforce has begun to be taken truly seriously, it makes me really proud. Um, and as difficult as the pandemic has been, watching the way that the, the people in Kansas, we were already there. It, it's a misnomer to say that we stepped up. We didn't step up, we were already there. But to see that we, not only were we already there, we were already effective and, um, and, and crucial. And so that was, that's amazing to get to go in and talk about that and highlight that. And, and I, I love that ability. Um, hi, Tiffany Manis, if I could just speak for just a moment. Um, I've been part of CCPC for uh, uh, probably close to a decade now. <laughs> if I look at it, and worked in advocacy um, back in 2012. Uh, started working with different organizations and trying to work with um, KDHE and working on regulations and being part of a, a team that talked about Lexi's Law and all of the changes that were coming. 
Um, and as Emily said, like I've been doing this job for, I'm in my 19th year of childcare and you get to the point where it's like, yeah, I've done this training before and I'm here and I'll hope I can take away one thing. If I can take away one thing, that's a win. Um, but really CCPC, every single time I've attended the conference, it's exciting, awesome training that I, I don't see anywhere else because it's very specific to home child care providers, um, which is just, it's just a different, it's, it's different from just child care training where we're talking about all the layers. Like we don't have layers. I'm in a room, I have an infant, I have a five-year-old. How, you know, what I, I love hearing from someone who's been in a room with an infant and a five-year-old and they aren't like, well, just get out this Play-Doh and go to town. It's like, okay, so that may work if you have all four-year-olds, but it doesn't necessarily work when you've got an infant and a five-year-old. So I, I love the training that they offer. I also love getting to know providers across the state and hear everyone like while we're all struggling with the same things there's some providers that have different challenges um that it's just awesome to hear okay how can i help you with this and how can you help me with this like you'll find someone who's had your situation which is just so helpful because i can reach out and i can also be a mentor for a new provider if they if they're having a struggle so it's it's awesome to have that network of providers it's awesome to have the new fresh great training um it's just a great organization thank you tiffany for sharing that perspective of being a member a very active member I know as a former provider for many years, uh, both family and center-based care, um, I always said, I wish there was this support group or something for providers that I could attend and just network with others. And, you know, like you said, if you're having a bad day or if you have a challenge that you need to find a solution for, or just talk to someone that understands exactly what you're experiencing for the most part every day. And unfortunately, I didn't realize about CCPC. So I think that this is a great opportunity for so many providers to get involved. And I know that you wear so many hats throughout a day. Like, like Angie said, you know, she's working from seven to 5.30 every day. That's really long days. And of course, we all know that providers are all so committed to their profession and they are willing to work those long days and then still spend time in the evenings or uh, juggle their schedules throughout a day. I know Emily is a part of the panel and, you know, she's um, bringing in subs. She's maybe closing her program for a day. She's uh, juggling kids while she's, you know, on the screen sharing information. And so there's just a whole bunch of different ways that that can look. But, you know, the bottom line is just the commitment that's there. And uh, just to have this as a resource for providers, I think is phenomenal. And the advocacy work that you're doing is so commendable because like Emily said, you can do whatever advocacy is your comfort level, um, you know, possibly from doing what she did, testifying in front of a committee, which can be very overwhelming and intimidating to just talking to parents in your community about, you know, the importance of the work that you do. And so um, I'm just so impressed by all of this. And I'm so glad that we were able to take this time uh, to do the webinar at a different time of the day to allow so many of you to attend. And I hope that the word gets out there. This will be a recording that's on our website that anyone can go to and watch and that we can advocate for. And uh, I hope that uh, many other people will learn about this and join. And I just love the work that you're doing and the, the commitment that you make to that work. And I know firsthand how valuable that, that is to all of your members. So thank you for everything you've shared with us today. And I'm gonna give everyone one last chance if you have any additional thoughts or questions. We have some time, so we can definitely hear those if you have them.
okay, well, I've been told I'm supposed to count to 10 for that. And so I guess I did. So Debbie, actually one thought that I had, you had mentioned just now, like you had mentioned like the, you know, parent interaction. And one thing that I would also encourage that, you know, if, if parents are listening, you know, do go on and learn about what we are because, you know, as providers, there are benefits for us. And what I would hope parents would gather from something like having, if their provider is a member of CCPC, ideally what that helps do is establish the line of trust that um, in a situation, one of the most terrifying decisions for a parent to make is who is going to take care of your child when you're not able to be there. And knowing that there is a professional organization that supports providers and promotes regulations, promotes compliance, promotes professionalism, that ideally would help alleviate some of that concern for parents and then open up lines of trust between parents and providers when they understand this provider is working hard and, and doing everything they can to be the best for their child. And so that, that is another thing that I would hope that our state is able to promote and see is, is that benefit as well. And I'm going to say one more thing, because I like to talk. Um, <laughs> But I also want people to know, or providers to know, that we are open to ideas. We're always looking for ideas to improve our organization. How can we reach people better? You know, can we offer a different training, different meetings? What can we do to help you? Because again, our goal for this organization is to help and support providers. We're not here on a pedestal. We're not perfect. We're going to make mistakes. Um, you know, just this week, one of our one of our girls, well, I shouldn't call her a girl. She's not a girl. One of our board members uh, was working on our membership and, you know, Excel is a lovely program <laughs> and she made a mistake. And I said, you know, she was really upset with herself. I said, give yourself grace. You've worked all day long and you're, <laughs> you're doing this for the organization. It's okay. We'll make a mistake. We'll come back. We'll fix it and we'll do better. So again, we're a volunteer. We don't have a lot of money. We don't have big apps that can merge all our emails together and send everything out at one time. We're doing a lot of basic information and data entry. So, you know, if there's things that people can help and come up with new ideas for us, we're always open to that. And that's why, again, um, we're looking for board members. We're looking for members. You don't have to be a board member to give us an idea. You can be a member and just shout it out to us, email it, give it to us on our Facebook. Um, we're always looking for ideas to help providers and what we can do to solve their problems. So I am done. I'm not talking anymore. <laughs> well, what you've said is very valuable and I'm glad that you uh, keep talking. And speaking of valuable, I just think it's so important to recognize what your organization is doing to uh, educate everyone um, on what the value of your profession is, because that is so important right now. And it is something that we talk about as being um, a frustration and a barrier to a lot of what work can be done. I know one of the first things that happened to me as a provider many years ago, someone asked me one day, what is it that you do? And I said, well, I'm a licensed um, home provider um, and, you know, for, with children. And he's like, oh, you babysit. And that was just didn't sit right with me. <laughs> and so I... Uh, I educated him very quickly on, uh, you know, the differences between uh, what that might look like. But I know that all of you deal with that. And I think we've come a long way. I hope that we've come a long way. Um, that was uh, almost 30 years ago. And so, um, you know, the work that you do, though, does help educate people about that and promote the value of the profession and just um, emphasizes the hard work and commitment. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you joining us that are providers, those uh, Emily and Angie for presenting all of the comments that were made and the comments that are in the chat. And um, we're so glad that this was able to happen tonight. So thank you for having us. So the only thing we have left to do is to uh, wrap up, uh, announce next meetings, which as I mentioned already, the Early Childhood Recommendations Panel meets next Friday morning, 
9 to 11.30, you can join us live or watch those recordings later. Our next bi-weekly webinar is Wednesday, April 20th, back to our uh, noon time um, for that day. And we always ask that you let us know what topics you're interested in, or if you have any information to share um, with either the webinars or the weekly emails. Uh, we have a little bit of time, but our next children's cabinet and stakeholder group meetings are scheduled for Friday, June 3rd. And you can register for the stakeholder group um, at the link that Megan is putting in the chat. And so um, this Real has quick, been a Debbie, wonderful- I'm so sorry. Oh, Michelle, sorry. I've got Michelle on as well. Um, for all of our providers that are here tonight, since we have your ear, we're gonna have another non-traditional webinar and that is 518, correct? 7 p.m. And that'll be uh, KSAEYC. So we're gonna have another provider webinar um, for those of you who, if you're able to make it uh, and show your support the other way. So we'd appreciate it if you could, if you could uh, be there for them as well. That's great. And that'll be uh, just like what tonight looked like, correct, Hannah, with the 7 to 8 p.m. on May 18th. Okay, and you'll be getting notices and things of that as, um, also like we send out. So that's great. Thanks for joining us tonight, Michelle. We look forward to that. So to wrap up the evening, I always like to leave you with a thought. And um, I'm sitting here in Lawrence, Kansas tonight, and it's a little bit stormy acting outside and looks like it might be going to rain if it hasn't already while we were here doing this. And so my quote for tonight is, be the rainbow to someone's cloud. So we hope that you have a great rest of your evening and we look forward to continuing to see you at um, our upcoming webinars. Good night, everybody. And thank you, CCPC. Thank you for having us.